Hey guys, what is up? Super Man Rocks here, and I'm back for my week four NA Academy overview, analysis, and kind of power rankings. Um, in a sense, more of a tier list, I think, on this one. But uh, yes, I am back here. If you guys have not checked out my most recent comeback videos, of course, I had the update video talking about how the fact that I'm back. And then, of course, the last few days, we've been getting LEC weekly reviews, LCS weekly reviews. Later on in the week, of course, you guys will be getting LPL and LCK reviews on Monday and Tuesday, as per usual, jumping back into schedule. But it is the weekend, which means it is time to go over one of my favorite leagues to talk about, and that is NA Academy. I think there is a lot of really, really fun stuff happening in Academy, not only this split, but all year long. And so I am excited to talk about it. If you guys are excited for that, please let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, obviously, you guys' feedback really uh, it helps me a lot. As you know, I, I brought more people on to help with the visuals, so they have changed up a bit. And if you guys want to let me know how you feel about those down in the comment section below, you know I love your feedback. But let's not waste too much time. Um, with the previous ones, with the LEC and the LCS one, I kind of caught up a little bit because we really only missed one week. Uh, with Academy, we've missed quite a few. We're jumping into week four here for Academy because of how early they start. And so um, I'm not going to be doing the big recap, power ranking, standings, catch up like I did for those regions. Uh, I am just going to be jumping into the week four games. You'll kind of get an idea of how I believe the team has been playing throughout the season with how I talk about them just in these games. Um, but we're going to be going over all 10 series that happened this week, week four in Academy. So uh, let's not waste too much time. Let's just jump right into it, honestly, with the first series here of day one in week four. And that was CLG Academy taking on Cloud9 Academy. Uh, a good series here between two teams that I think have shown that they are competent. Maybe neither of them is like the tippity top of the top in terms of the standings, but they both have been pretty good all year long. They both trade games here. Uh, CLG taking game one in a draft gap. I have really no other way to say it. It is kind of fun to talk about this because this is actually the first series globally that had Belveth, and, or at least in the major regions that I've watched. So... We get to see a little bit of Belveth here, and that was incredibly interesting. It really kind of took over this late game here. Rosethorn, uh, who's had a little bit of a rough year, uh, did kind of take over this late game in the top lane just with those those weird Belveth mechanics, um, making it really hard for Cloud9 to come back. I expect this to be a pick that we're going to see a lot in pretty much every region that it's available in as soon as that patch rolls out uh, globally for all the other major regions. But in this one, it was really, really strong, really dominant in general. Um, and then in game two, Cloud9 was just the better team. It was a little bit of a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing, but, uh, Cloud9 was the better team in my opinion in that game two, but game one was just really, really strong from the Belveth and the Rakan. Um, game two, uh, kind of off the back of, uh, a really good Wukong game from Sheedan and of course Jinx, uh, King on the Jinx. So, um, just a generally even series, I'd say, I'd say Cloud9 looked a tad bit better, but I feel like that's splitting hairs at this point. CLG has not looked like what they were in spring. I think they looked better in spring, and I'm not exactly sure why. Obviously, you're promoting Dokla from Academy. Jenkins going down here to, to, to become your Academy top laner. Uh, you're bringing in Meech um, to play with Breezy. I think both of those moves are fine. Um, uh, Meech is definitely a downgrade to Prismal, but, uh, you know, obviously you can't expect Prismal to sit in Academy forever. I understand his decision to... You know, take some time off because it just felt like he was stuck in purgatory. But generally, I think the CLG team still looks pretty okay. S for C9, again, some changes. Um, obviously, new support. Destiny coming in from Immortals. Uh, the support experiment that they had last split, where whether it was Isles, whether it was Winsome. Um, they've obviously decided to scrap that and just go with Destiny and obviously Sven. Um, and then you bring in Sheedan here in the jungle, of course, for Malice which I think is like a mechanical upgrade. Sheedan is one of those players that I think you've been waiting on to see get an academy spot for quite a while. He's someone who I believe in the past has had some, you know, in-game toxicity issues that have kept him out of academy. Hopefully those are fixed. Obviously getting into a competitive setting can either fix or exacerbate those issues. So uh, it looks like everything seems to be good here on Cloud9, but I like both these rosters. Both of them are good, but not great right now, kind of in that mid-tier um, Breezy is going to be my player of the series here. His Recon game in game one was really good. And he actually was a big reason they were in game two for, or at least it kept going, 
Uh, his karma is pretty good. Or he just has good map awareness, I should just say. Um, but Rosethorn is going to be my dud of the series on the same team here. The Belveth game in game one was pretty good. It wasn't like... It, it didn't much feel like it was Rosethorn. It more felt like the champion being great. And then, man, the Udyr pick in game two. First of all, Udyr's just... I, I just don't get the pick. You... you especially with this comp. I get it. It's like a go fast comp, but you don't really have a speed up button, right? You have Zerial, but that's for Zeri. You have Karma press, you know, clicking on you, but usually Karma is not going to be clicking on the Udyr, at least in my experience. Um, and so I, I just don't know. And, and really, Rosethorn kind of ran it in that game. Not that you can do much on Udyr, but, you know, not not a good pick and didn't execute on it. So Rosethorn's going to be my dud of the game or my dud of the series there. But overall, just a generally okay series between two Pretty good teams splitting one and one. Um, I like I said, I think Cloud Nine maybe looked a little bit better, just a little bit more cohesive as a unit. King and Destiny are kind of shaping up to be a pretty good duo, and Sheedan has had a pretty good split. But um, you know, you know, Belveth is kind of the big takeaway from Game One here of just that champion looks pretty nuts when she's uh, when she's available. Moving on to the second series here of week. Four, and that is going to be Team Liquid Academy taking on Hunter Thieves Academy. Uh, probably a battle of the two best teams in Academy right now. Team Liquid and Hunter Thieves. Not that that should surprise anybody. These are both organizations that have pretty consistently been at the top of the Academy Proving Grounds scene uh, for quite a while. Um, but uh, they split one-on-one. -on -one. They split one-on-one -on -one here. A, a, a back-and-forth series for sure. Team Liquid kind of very aggressively takes Game 1. And then 100 Thieves, which is just a really fun comp in Game 2. So we'll go over that. Game 1, a 35-minute win here for Team Liquid. Uh, off the back of Bradley's Akali, which was really, really strong. Obviously, that's a pick he's been known for for years. Transitioning over here to the top lane at the beginning of 2022. Um, the Akali is a pick that we're very familiar with when it comes to Bradley and being able to take over. Uh, as we saw in Proving Grounds last year. And so, he gets that in this one. He plays into the Olaf in the top lane, which is a very dynamic matchup. And he wins it. He wins it pretty hard. Um, not to take away from Tenacity. He has a really good game in Game 2. But Bradley wins that one pretty pretty strongly in Game 1. Uh, but everybody on that team plays pretty well. I, th I think, um, and I'll get to this, but Yeon and Ayla have been phenomenal for this Team Liquid Academy team. You could argue that both of them are in the top three in terms of MVP candidates, both of them, uh, for so far this split. Yeon and Ayla have been a bot lane that have been absolutely destroying the Academy scene. And uh, they showed it in this game one. Ayla on the Nautilus, it felt very, very difficult for 100 Thieves to do anything. That engage threat was always there, and he was everywhere on the map. A really good game from him. And then Yeon on the Callista, just kind of facilitating that. Hyri on the, on the Yasuo didn't have to do much in this one, but that's fine. That's a good thing, you know, in the most part. Um, I really do like the Akali Yasuo... Double draft here from Team Liquid. Of course, that's a double flex because both Bradley and Hyari can play both. And so, uh, you know, continuing to mix up drafts like this, I think, is a positive for them. Uh, as for Game 2, that was much more 100 Thieves and uh, really off the back of a couple really good picks in the draft. Uh, the Seraphine bot is something that I've talked about on this channel. I really do like it. I think it's really good right now, especially into, like, a weird comp that... Team Liquid had with Yasuo Senna in the bot lane. Yasuo, of course, getting the farm, but uh, Senna actually being played by the support. So, uh, kind of a weird bot lane. I actually think Seraphine takes advantage of Yasuo quite well. Um, and uh, we saw that in this matchup. With the Alistair, there's a lot of essential free engage, not only for the Seraphine, but for the Fiora, which we'll get to later, because Tenacity had a really good one here on Fiora in game two. But uh, just generally, 100 Thieves looking a lot better in this game. And these two teams kind of showing why I think a lot of them consider to be the top two teams in Academy right now. Um, my player of the series is going to go to Bradley. Bradley had that really good game one. It was really between him and Tenacity, but he had a much better game two than Tenacity had a game one, in my opinion. And so Bradley, you know, of the two hyper carries is going to get that nod for me. Uh, BMFX also had a really good game on Seraphine in game two. But his game one on Draven was pretty abysmal. He was probably, that's probably the worst game of anybody um, between these two games. But uh, he had such a good game in game two that it's hard for me to give him dud of the series. Unfortunately, that one is going to go to Busio. Because, like I said, the Alistair opened up a lot of things. But that Braum game in game one was useless. Um, Braum is just one of those picks where either it's 
helping you or it's really not. It's really just not doing anything. And in game one, they were just far, they were behind enough where Braum was sitting there taking damage and there was no damage being put out because they didn't have any. And so, uh, yeah, I generally just kind of a, I don't know if it's necessarily Busio's fault, but he, his impact in game one was was null and void. Like I said, BMFX had a worse game in game one, but his game two was much better, in my opinion, than Busio's. So, um, yeah, uh, just a pretty good series here between two teams that I think are relatively even and, and should be sharing the top of the standings probably for the rest of the split. Moving on to our third series here of Day 1, we had Dignitas Academy taking on FlyQuest Academy. Um, both of these teams kind of surprising, I think, a lot of people towards the beginning of this split. FlyQuest especially has started off really hot after being kind of an afterthought in spring. Uh, their team has definitely gotten a lot better, although they've cooled off just a tad in the meantime. But Dignitas taking the series 2 to nothing, they have looked really, really solid, uh, just generally. Throughout the split so far. Um, Spawn, who you'll note is my player of the series here, but we'll get to that later, has been phenomenal. Uh, he is very much the early candidate for MVP of Academy. He has been great. He's his the steps that he has taken up in the past like four months have been wonderful to watch. And he's someone that I'm definitely looking at if if someone like Neo doesn't continue to perform at the LCS level, like Spawn has been Phenomenal, obviously, neither costs an import slot, so you could seamlessly bring Spawn up to the main roster without having to worry about transitioning River or Blue out of it. He has just been really, really, really good for the Tignitas team, and that did not change in this series. Game 1, obviously, on the Ezreal was really, really good. His ability to stay safe, phenomenal. His ability to pair up in those team fights with Insanity here on the Swain, really, really, really good. So, uh, just generally good. They also get Belveth. Um, and Belveth still looks really strong. FlyQuest, um, continues to confuse me in draft. Uh, that's something that they've kind of shown, uh, pretty consistently throughout the split here in Academy, is that their drafts are just kind of, eh. Um, I'm, or at least I'm not a huge fan of them. I, the Riven in the top lane, it's fine, but into Jax, it's just not what you'd love to see. Um, and then Volleybear. Uh, Volleybear with an Ari, if you're gonna pick this, great. Uh, Belveth is a bad matchup for Volleybear, generally speaking, but you have to make plays early. And I just am not seeing Volleybears play this, uh, matchup generally, not just this matchup, but any matchup as aggressively as I would want them to. And, and we saw that in both Game 1 and Game 2 out of UG, but, uh, Game 2 was a little bit closer. Uh, not really, honestly, this was a little bit more of a stomp, honestly. Uh, Dignitas just looked like the better team. Belveth got the team ahead early. Spawn was able to take over with Kalista in lane. Um, taking the, the mirror matchup here that they had the previous game. And so, uh, just generally Dignitas looking like the better team, especially in bot lane. Like I said, Spawn, my player of the series here. Diamond is going to be my dud of the series, but I think you could reasonably give this to Tomo as well. Uh, kind of getting outplayed in the counter matchup here. I give it to Diamond just because that Renata game in game one was kind of bleh. And then Karma did absolutely nothing in game two, but you very much could give it to Tomo for... Uh, you know, Kalista in game one losing lane to an Ezreal Rakan, and then in game two just not having any sort of poke pressure, even with the best poke lane in the game in Ezreal Karma. So, um, definitely not a great showing from FyQuest bot lane, but a great showing from Dignitas' bot lane. And like I said, XU and Insanity, they've played kind of inconsistent throughout the Academy split so far, especially XU. He's had ups and he's had downs. That was something that we got familiar with in Summer. A big reason this team would win usually would be because XU could take over the game. And a big reason they would lose is because XU tried to take over the game and, and failed. Um, and so it's definitely one of those. It feels like he has a lot more help from his bottom lane this time. And then obviously bringing in Insanity in the mid lane to replace Darkwing is a much more experienced mid laner. I think has definitely helped it kind of ease the pressure off of XU a little bit. Um, as for FlyQuest, uh, their, uh, their roster really hasn't changed at all. They, they call Philip up to the main roster as we've been seeing. In LCS, Kumo gets demoted dear, uh, here to Academy. Obviously, I've been talking about it. Kumo's had a, a rough couple splits here in LCS for FlyQuest. And I think maybe getting a stint back in Academy is what he needs. He's been all right. Um, but actually, the big standout for this team so far this year has been Spearax in the mid lane, who has probably been their best player and was actually really consistently one of the best players in Academy through the beginning couple weeks. Like I said, he's cooled off a bit with this FlyQuest team, but generally speaking, Spearax has had a little bit of a breakout split. Um, Tomo and Diamond just couldn't hold up here. There's really no other way to put it. Like I said, Spawn, player of the series. Diamond is the dud of the series, but if you wanted to give it to Tomo, that's fine too. 
Yuji has his ups and downs. We've seen that in the series alone. Volley Bear is a pick that he has played a lot of, but it's just way too passive right now. Um, I don't know if it's because Volley Bear players feel like they can't fight on him, but uh, this is just, it's a pick that doesn't really give you a lot of pressure early game right now, and that is a negative. That is just a net negative uh, if you're going to be picking it into something that is proactive like Belveth or, or almost any other jungler that is quote-unquote meta right now. Wukong, you know, whoever you want to put in that spot, right? I think uh, Volley Bear needs to play that more aggressive, and if, if these junglers don't feel like they can trade early with that, then I'm not exactly sure what the whole point of the pick is. But uh, we'll continue onward. Um, you know, just the draft's not that bad. It's just one pick that I don't get. So a good win for Dignitas. Not the end of the world here for FlyQuest, but... Uh, it is a good showing to see uh, Dignitas' bot lane continue to be so dominant throughout the course of the split. Moving on to our fourth series here of Day 1, we had Immortals Academy taking on Golden Guardians Academy. Kind of a mid-tier team taking on what at the beginning of the season was just clearly the worst Academy team, which is really, really sad to talk about because Golden Guardians was pretty good last split, but... They blow up the Academy roster. They change a lot of the members out. Um, get a little bit older in some sense, but also younger, I guess. I, I shouldn't say. They just kind of swap out where their veteranship is. But um, not something that I... This isn't a team that I was particularly excited about on paper, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that after we talk about Immortals, who take both games here. The first one in about 30 minutes, second one a little over. Uh, just generally a good series here from Immortals. Uh, they continue to kind of be the measuring stick, as I call it, of Academy, where they pretty consistently beat the teams that aren't as good as them, but they do tend to struggle against better teams. Golden Guardians not able to measure up in this one. Uh, this team has definitely regressed. Not Golden Guardians, uh, Immortals has definitely regressed, I think, from Spring. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the reasoning for that is. Uh, obviously, a lot of their players still the same, but... You know, players like Chad and Arrow are just simply not having as good of springs or summers as they had springs. And I think that that is definitely something to be concerned about. Uh, Arrow in this one was really good, I should say, mostly in game two. In game one, uh, Chad taking over on the Udyr, great. Udyr, Yumi, if that if you're going to pick Udyr, Udyr, Sivir, Yumi, like that's the comp I get it in, right? It, this is like a go, 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 go comp. You have TF ult to catch up. Fiora can split push and create pressure. You can do the one three ones. Just generally speaking, I think if you're going to play a pick like that, this is how to do it. And Chad showed that off in game one with a pretty good game. Uh, I will say Joey on the on the Yumi was the most important member of game one, but it's just hard to, you know, say that Joey had the best game because Yumi. Uh, and then game two, like I said, a little bit more close, but Arrow just took this one over on Kalista. Got so far ahead in laning phase of the Zyra Khan lane, which, like I said, I don't think is that bad right now. It just certainly did not work in this game. That I can promise you. Um, but Arrow, yeah, Callista, Renata, really, really scary and dangerous. You can throw the Renata in. Uh, she basically gets to get her shit off for free and then uh, line herself up exactly where she wants for her ultimate. So a cool combo there. Um, but yeah, generally a good series for Immortals and not so much for Golden Guardians. Like, Arrow's my player of the series. Callista game was awesome. Uh, Chad, like I said, had a good game one. They, uh, their new top laner, Vital, I, I, I want to talk about this because I want to commend Immortals for actually going through with bringing Vital up to the Academy roster. This is someone that we have seen, like, almost nothing of in terms of actual tournament success. He's a solo queue guy, and to bring him in here to uh to kind of be a starting academy top laner without any sort of not any i should say but with really without any sort of collegiate or amateur experience either i think is a very bold move and he's held up to an extent um he's been good i wouldn't say he's been great but he's certainly been good i'm interested to see where he goes uh from this week onward but uh golden guardians on the other hand this team just inspires very little confidence in me uh you're now bringing in two veterans uh two coaches essentially from Previous splits have just said, okay, I guess we'll play Academy, Acadian in the jungle, and then, of course, Choose in the mid lane, former Choo Choo's of uh, Oceania fame. Um, just neither have looked good. Uh, Acadian's had some ups, but he's also definitely had some down. And then Choose has arguably been the worst mid laner in Academy this year. He is my dud of the series here. He, he just 
he dies a lot. He gets caught out a lot. That Corky game in game one was not super good. Uh, dying six times on Azir in game two, again, also not good. Like, I, it's just kind of disappointing, I should say, to kind of see this team that I think was at the forefront of pushing for an academy and, and you know, Proving Grounds title. Uh, last split just kind of drop off after a rough Proving Grounds, uh, like, tournament. Six, you know, like, they, they, they dropped out pretty early in that tournament, a lot earlier than I think a lot of people expected them to, very similar to CLG. And uh, then they just kind of blew it up. Um, you know, Array comes in here to replace uh, 6A and Violet. Chu's coming in here to replace Ryoma. Uh, just generally kind of meh. You bring in Concept, former Immortals Academy top laner from last split, who has a very interesting champion pool. Of, obviously, pulls out the Trundle here in game one, but he's known for his Mundo, his Malphite, etc. So, uh, an interesting an interesting Academy decision for Golden Guardians. I'm not sh quite sure if it's going to pay off. Obviously, it's not paying off in the winning department right now, but if you can get players like Array and Concept to kind of break through and show that they have a lot to develop with, I certainly think this this can be a success if you can get players like Acadian and Shoes to kind of nurture them. We're just not seeing that kind of growth on the Rift at the moment, but hopefully for them, it comes eventually. So uh, generally a good series for Immortals. Uh, like I said, I still have some pretty major question marks about whether or not this team can actually be a top team, but... Uh, they're definitely, at the very least, a good team, whereas Golden Guardians has a lot more questions about whether or not they're even going to be, you know, with not at the bottom one or two teams throughout the rest of the split. That's going to bring us to our last series here of Day 1. We had TSM Academy taking on Evil Geniuses Academy, uh, two teams that have not, certainly not, performed uh, up to championship expectations uh, so far this split. AEG is going to able to take this one two to nothing. Um, a pretty dominant series here from them. TSM just looks completely lost. They have they started off kind of okay, honestly, and have ever since I think the other teams have kind of really solidified their rosters and really gotten comfortable playing with one another. TSM has just continued to fall and fall and fall down the standings. It's actually been I believe a couple weeks since they've won a game. Um, not a particularly good look. For this academy team that has really struggled for quite a while now. But let's talk about EG because they've been playing kind of a lot better recently. I know their record might not say that. But um, they definitely have some bright spots to look up to. Most notably this bot lane I think has definitely been pretty good. Um, Smoothie comes in here as a replacement for Skytech in spring. And obviously Smoothie is a better player right now. There's really no debates over that. You could argue whether or not having Smoothie here is a benefit. Uh, but... Just having that player that's going to be a little bit more of a veteran presence is kind of what they were going for in this case, obviously. And Kaori and Smoothie have lived up to that expectation, being a pretty good bot lane and definitely the driving force of this Evil Geniuses team. You'll notice in Academy, a lot of the teams are driven by their bot lane talent. I think there's just a lot of really, really solid bot lane talent in North America right now. Uh, it's a position that has always been very good to us as a region, and I think uh, it's only getting better. And I think the support pool is actually really, really, really strong in Academy right now as well. Um, and Kaori and Smoothie kind of embody that. Of I think both are pretty good players, but even they can't be on a great team here, even with a, a very experienced Academy mid laner here in Saligo. And then uh, two decent prospects here in Asserti and Tomio in the top lane. Uh, but yeah, a good series here from the bot lane. They really were the ones that were the big carries in the two different games. You could have given player of the series here to either Kai uh, Kaori, I should say, or Smoothie. Um, Kaori was kind of the carry, and Smoothie on two games of Rakan was kind of setting everybody up. I gave it to Smoothie. I thought he was really, really, really good here. Just kind of making plays all over the map, being super proactive, giving that Kaisa an opportunity to really take over the game, which is essentially what happened in both of these games. Kaisa just got so far ahead that TSM couldn't even really team fight. So, uh, just a really good game here, for, or a really good series here from both Kaori and Smoothie. Not to take away from anybody else, Sligo had a really good game one here on the Ari. Uh, and, and Tomio had a good game one here on the Trundle as well. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, Surdy's fine. Uh, his game two on the Jace was a little questionable at times, but uh, still still pretty good showing. As for TSM, meh. I mean, this this lineup just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. They bring in Soul here in the top lane. Soul is somebody who I have been interested in for a little while. Uh, in uh, Amateur, obviously not formally going by Soul. Um, but going by Anime Girl, and you, you bring him up here to Academy, give him that opportunity. He's clearly not, 
like super ready for this opportunity yet, but I believe he can get there. He's played pretty well in amateur over the past few years for um, for AOE, and so um, you know, I, 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 you give him the shot. That's great. You also have Shen Yi down here now in academy because he just simply wasn't good enough on the main roster. Obviously, Mia has taken that spot, and Mia has been much better. Um, so you have Shen Yi down here in academy, and honestly, Shen Yi looks quite outmatched here as well. He's gonna be my dote of the series here on the Leona and Alistair. It really just seems like he has one distinct playstyle in that engaged support, you know, uh, just full in kind of mentality. And if he, like, this is a meta that doesn't particularly suit that. And so he's going to struggle a lot in a meta like this, which is is what we're seeing. It's really sad to see that because I know a lot of people had a lot of expectations for Shenyi coming over. I was definitely hesitant at first. Um, you can check that out on this channel uh, from the beginning of this year, but I didn't think it would go quite this unfortunate for Shenyi where at this point he's probably like a bottom three to four support in academy not even in LCS and that's just not what you're looking for it's really hard to tell how good the rest of this team is because there are times where they play well and there are times where they play bad instinct is like a great example of that where I think if I, I'm not sure if instinct would look a lot better if he had a better team around him a better support but right now he doesn't look very good hyper is like hyper inconsistent um, is the way I put him, is just generally, like, you get two games of Udyr here, I always talk about, I just don't think Udyr's that strong right now, a lot of teams are picking him, I don't think he's that particularly good right now, um, and he kind of shows it in the series where he just doesn't really accomplish anything, especially in that game one, there was just nothing from him, and then TakeOver's been the opposite, he's, he's the opposite of his name so far this year, he's been a complete non-factor for this TSM team, he is hardly the reason they ever lose, but he is hardly the reason they ever win either. He just doesn't really seem to be that big of a game changer. I know mid lane's a little bit in a weaker spot right now on this patch, but I, I don't think that excuses it. Um, this has just generally not been a great year for TSM, uh, both on the main roster and in Academy. I think uh, their four and fourteen record after the season or after the series definitely sums up how they've been performing. But it's a good win for Evil Geniuses. Obviously, getting them on a roll I think would be positive. You have some guys you really want to develop here. And um, hopefully they can get some confidence in them so that they can continue to, to push forward and show some stuff going into Proving Grounds. Moving on to day two here of week four for Academy. We were kicking that off with Immortals Academy taking on 100 Thieves Academy in uh, a pretty easy win here for 100 Thieves, especially game two. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this team looks really good. Generally speaking, just really good. Um, I think, obviously, you have two new additions to this team here, Will, BMFX. I've talked about Will on this channel before. Will is a super prospect to me for North America. He is someone that I've had my eye on. Uh, he really broke out for Dignitas Academy last year. He was phenomenal for that team. Uh, he took spring off, uh, coming back here in summer, gets to play for one of the more premier organizations, taking Ken V's spot. In Academy, and he has looked general, genuinely great um, so far this year. Uh, just, just a really, really good player. Someone who I expect to be in LCS uh, not too long from now, honestly. I know a lot of people are really excited about Kenvi as a prospect, but to me, Will has a higher upside than Kenvi does. Um, I think Will really has the potential to be one of the best players in LCS if things actually pan out. And he showed why in this series where he absolutely took over on two games of Wukong. He looked great. Um, and BMFX looked really good here. Uh, he's had some ups and downs this season. He took a little bit to get going. The beginning of his season was definitely a little bit rocky. Um, he had some not-so-great performances to kick off summer, but he's kind of settled into his role here and is starting to make significantly less mistakes. And I think that's exactly what you want to see as a development track for a player like this. Um, he, he's played well, and, he, and I think his his partnership with Busio, uh, ever since Busio came back as well, has been... Uh, a very much a positive for this team. Tenacity is just kind of a hard smurf in general. Um, he flame horizons on Kale at 22 minutes, which is, I mean, that's about as not good as the game could possibly be going for you if you are vital. So not not the best look, but Tenacity is just a great player. He's someone who is LCS ready. We know he's LCS ready. He has performed in LCS. Uh, obviously just not a spot for him here in 100 Thieves because someday is there and someday is really, really good. So uh, hopefully Tenacity gets a shot in a similar way to how Kenvi got a shot um, this split. But as for Immortals, not a great series from them. Uh, Chad's my dud of the series. 
two not so good games on two very risky picks here in Kha'Zix and Rengar. Um, neither worked out. Uh, just got completely out jungled by Will. Pretty much had no pressure on the map. Was just constantly getting invaded and dying. Uh, not a good looking series here from Chad. When Chad loses, he loses hard. And that's really unfortunate because he showed some promise in spring. And I'm not saying that that promise is gone or anything like that. But the consistency is just not there for him. And he has not had a particularly good summer. I think he has uh, probably been the worst performing member of this Immortals Academy team. Including Vital. Just really had no... Uh, competitive experience up till this point, but uh, I do like the drafts because they're weird. You get the Heimerdinger here. I believe it's like the first Heimerdinger we've seen in, uh, at least in North America in a very, very long time. Uh, maybe since like Deftly. I'm trying to think of who else would, would have played Heimerdinger, but um, Arrow pulls out the Heimerdinger, Senna bot lane. Very, very interesting. Obviously, it gets obliterated by the Kaisa or by the Kalista because Kalista is, of course, going to obliterate Heimerdinger. There's really not much you can say about that. Kalista Renata is just such a good lane. But uh, generally speaking, not a good series for Immortals. That game, too, was really disgusting. It was a stomp, essentially, for minute one. So, uh, not great looking there. Um, but 100 Thieves looks great. Will looks great. Uh, like, one of the more dominant Academy junglers in the scene right now. Like I said, Tenacity's great. Uh, Jimmy has just kind of been there. Uh, not that he's been great or bad. He just hasn't had to... He's not the focal point of this team, because they have so many carries. Um, and then BMFX and Busio have uh, really kind of come into their own starting to have some good games and, and really starting to form that nice partnership that you were hoping they would. Um, but yeah, as for Immortals, you know, both main roster and Academy are kind of mad right now. Hopefully they can figure it out. Um, they, they just need a little bit more confidence, I think. Uh, or maybe a little less confidence. Uh, maybe not so much the Kha'Zix and Rengar. That's, that's, maybe that's the solution to their problems. Maybe a little bit more of the Wukong, a little less of the Kha'Zix and Rengar, but uh, I definitely still think there's a lot of talent on this team, as we saw earlier in the week. It's just about whether or not they put it together now or at some point in the future. Moving on to the second series here of Day 2, we had TSM Academy taking on Dignitas Academy. To a win here for Dignitas, that means they go 4-0 this week. A really, really solid week for them. Um, their bot lane really showing why they are one of the best in Academy, and why they maybe should be getting some extra reps, and we'll talk about that. There are a few players on this team that I think could actively help the main roster right now. But um, game one, I, I haven't really been doing game-by-game -game recaps. I don't think they're that important for Academy. I think it's really about the grander scale. Game one was... Uh, uh, it was in Dignitas' favor pretty much the whole time. Game two was actually pretty close. It, it was pretty back and forth, mostly due to TakeOver. TakeOver played really well in this series generally. That Corky game one was really good. That Ari game two was actually phenomenal as well. Sometimes this team can just be a little too hard to carry. Soul had a really good game too here on the Yone as well. Um, and so a couple really good games here from the TSM solo laners, but it just wasn't enough to carry the rest of this team that just really feels like they are dead weight at this point, for lack of a better term. Um, but let's talk about Dignitas. Another really good series from this bot lane. Spawn and JJ have been phenomenal this year. There's really no other way to put it. They have really just been great. You get... The, uh, the Zeri in Game 1, and then you pull out the Yasuo here in the Game 2. We've seen this pick be really, really difficult to pull off. Um, and I actually don't even think it's that phenomenal of a matchup into Seraphine. I think it's alright, but I don't think it's a phenomenal matchup into Seraphine. And uh, Spawn just dominates this game. Uh, he he He's going to be my player of the series again. Um, he was really, really, really good here. Uh, that Yasuo game in Game 2 was really, really fun to watch. And then Zeri just... Once Zeri gets ahead in, in any game, it, it's pretty easy to just win it from there. Uh, but JJ's playing really well in that same vein. Uh, two Rakan games, we've seen Rakan be kind of a pretty big pick here on 12.2, or 12.12, .12, I should say. And uh, we'll see if that continues into the major region. Sometimes Academy's not the best uh, indicator for what we're going to see in, uh, you know, LCS or any other major region for that matter. But uh, Rakan has certainly seemed like a strong pick this patch. Um, it may just be because you're going into bot lanes that aren't as, you know, aren't, aren't as good playing into it. Um, which TSM's just hasn't been that good this year. But uh, yeah, Rakan looks pretty strong. And then a, a really solid series here from Insanity. Two games of Silas. That game two on the Silas was really strong. He was my player of the game in game two. He was really, really phenomenal. Um, that was a really, really good performance. If, Like I said in the, in the earlier one, if this dig team starts to, you know, continues to struggle in the way that they've been struggling, bring up Insanity, bring up Spawn, bring up JJ, give them a shot. Because, uh, really, at this point, they are showing that they are probably too good for Academy and should be given that opportunity 
at a higher level. And this is a dig team that is very much struggling right now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Kind of similar to how I was feeling with a lot of the Immortals Academy roster in spring. But uh, moving on to TSM, sometimes games are just a little bit too heavy to carry. And that's how it felt for TakeOver in this one. Of uh, Hyper, Instinct, and Shenyi just aren't playing that well. There's really no other way to put it. Hyper was awful in this series. He's my dud of the series. He just has these. Sometimes he doesn't get Lee Sin, and he's just bad. And that's kind of what happened here, or at least that's what felt like happened here. Is he does he didn't get Lee Sin. Lee Sin was banned out, and he sucked. Um, you know, he played the Wukong Trundle Mirror uh, in games one and two, and lost both times. Uh, pretty indisputably lost both times. Uh, the Trundle game in game one, or the in game two, was especially not good. Just dying over and over again, accomplishing nothing, not really helping any lanes. Um, just not, the, the positives to talk about for TSM, the solo lanes were actually pretty good in this one. Takeover was good in both games. I think he leads the entire league in, like, damage percentage, and, you know, he's got a really good KD. I don't think he's been as impactful as his stats would say, but he is still having a pretty good year, and it is sucky to see that the rest of the team around him just isn't up to par. And Sol actually had a really good game here on the Yone in game two. Uh, was able to really influence a lot of things, including that, uh, dragon fight late in the game, but, uh, just not enough. Uh, the Trinomir in Game 1 is kind of a mad pick. He plays a lot better on these super aggressive, like, crit, you know, melee crit champions that I think we're starting to see pop up a little bit more often now than we did, you know, say a year ago. And that's probably going to help him, but uh, still definitely some time needed for him to become, uh, you know, good enough to carry a team like this to a win. Because, like I said, Hyper, not a good series. Shenyi, another not good series. Instinct just didn't accomplish anything on the Seraphine. You need to be super proactive on that pick in the bot lane. It just it just didn't happen. So uh, not a great series here from TSM. But Dig, definitely showing some signs of life and some signs of positivity. This is a team that, um, you know, I, I have a lot of positivity towards, especially these veterans. I think they're LCS ready and LCS capable. And, um, you know, we'll see if they actually take advantage of something like that. Moving on to our third series here of Day 2, we had Cloud9 Academy taking on FlyQuest Academy. A 1-1 -one -one split, with both games being relatively fun to watch. Game 1 definitely being a lot closer. Game 2 was pretty stompy, but in, in a fun way. In a fun way where it was good to just see players be really cool, be really good. There's really no other way to put it. Uh, game 1 was a FlyQuest win, and it was pretty close, but off the back of a pretty good Yone game here from Spirax. And then Yuji and Kumo just kind of being uh, effective. Uh, that FlyQuest was able to pull out a, a pretty close win uh, in that game one. I, I'll talk about the pick later, but I'm not a huge fan of Umumu. And, and I'll get to that in a bit. But game two, Cloud9 was just able to punish a lot of the picks that uh, FlyQuest was taking in game one. Stealing some of them and being able to punish the bot lane in the other uh, one. And um, FlyQuest went for something a little more unorthodox. Fiora mid. With Seraphine bot. And uh, didn't quite work out. I like the effort, but didn't quite work out. Um, Sheedon just had such a phenomenal game too. I mean, the dude dominated on that Talia pick. Uh, really, really dangerous uh, jungler in the right hands. And Sheedon clearly showed a lot of comfortability on that Talia pick in general. Um, and then King and Destiny just went bot lane so hard as Tristana and Rakan. That it was pretty much... I mean, the game was over really, really quickly. But... You know, a pretty good series from both teams, I would say. Sheedon's going to be my player of the series here. He had the best game of anybody here, and that was that game to Talia. Just absolutely dominant on that pick. Uh, was really just taking over the whole map, which is something that Talia can do super duper effectively. Even when his mid laner wasn't particularly, like, super far ahead, which Copy wasn't. Copy's had a little bit of a rough split. He's had a little bit of a rough year. He had, his spring was a little questionable, and then his summer's now been questionable as well. But, um... Copy had a little bit of a rough one in that one, and uh, Sheedon was still able to kind of take over the map here, getting bot lane ahead, and then top lane, you know, Gnar into Orn is just kind of a boring lane that Gnar gets to poke in, and uh, you just hope Orn scales up, you hope the team doesn't lose, and unfortunately they did, but yeah, bot lane was a problem for FlyQuest in that game too, that's why Diamond is going to be my dud of the series here, uh, his game two on the Amumu, that's a pick where if you're, that's a pick where if you're behind, it's just like doomed, it's completely doomed from the start. Um, there's nothing you can do because all you can do is go in. And if you're, if that's all you do and you're super behind, then you just die. Like you don't even really have time to get any of your shit off. The ultimates are bleh. Um, and that's kind of what happened in that game too. Uh, nine deaths, just very, very not good. Um, you could give it to Tomo, 
who accomplished absolutely nothing on this Seraphine in Game 2 as well. This is a bot lane that has... I, I've com almost completely fallen out of favor with. Uh, Tomo and Diamond were was a bot lane that I was really excited about going into the year because they played pretty well as a duo in 2021, but 2022 has certainly not been their year. They have not looked that great. Uh, they've kind of been the weakness of this team, if we're being honest, and that's definitely not a good sign, but... Um, we can talk about the Fiora mid, especially paired with the Kindred. I'm not exactly sure. Like, I get that you have the Seraphine bot, and, like, that's your AP presence, but... I don't know if that's enough. Like, I really don't, especially into a Gnar, um, who can just really itemize against that easily. And even, a, even a Yone can itemize against that really, really easily. Um, so it's just a little bit of an interesting decision to to go Kindred, Fiora. Not something I'm a huge fan of. I like the draft flexibility. You know, the idea that you can play Fiora in the mid lane, I think, is totally fine with the right comp around it. I just don't know if this was the right comp. Um, but nobody on FlyQuest really particularly played well in that game, too, so... It's really hard to know who to put blame on, but, you know, a, a good series tie here. FlyQuest is going to be happy that they got out of this with a tie. Game 1 was really close. Game 2 was not. Uh, Cloud9 looks really, really good. Sheedan especially, like I said, really good on that Talia. He's looked good all split long. He looks like a diamond in the rough that uh, is finally getting his academy shot and really showing that he should have gotten it sooner. And uh, that's a good sign. King and Destiny had a much better series here, but they are going into the struggling Tomo and Diamond, so it's hard to know. As for FlyQuest, that bot lane's got to turn it around. The, the top side of the map, I think, definitely has positives and can show why they can win games, but uh, this really doesn't feel like a complete team, and I think that might keep them from being one of the better teams in Academy all year long. Jumping into the fourth series here of Day 2, we had Team Liquid Academy taking on CLG Academy. Uh, two relatively good teams, but Team Liquid just kind of in a class of their own at the top of Academy right now. Maybe 100 Thieves is, like, close to that, but really Team Liquid looks like the world beaters, the team to beat, and in this series they showed why. A close Game 1 win. Uh, team Liquid had it in their control the whole time, just took a little bit of time to close out. And then Game 2 was was a lot more dominant, I think, from them, generally speaking. Um, Hi is going to be my player of the series here. He was phenomenal uh, for this Team Liquid team. We've been talking about Yeon. We've been talking about Ayla. And rightfully so, I don't want to take away from either of them. Both of them have been MVP level candidates for Academy this entire split, and both of them definitely deserve LCS consideration. But Hayari should be just on that list with them. Um, he has been also phenomenal. One of the better supportive mid laners in the league in terms of facilitating and allowing their team to open up options, you know, for wherever they want to go on the map. Uh, Hayari does that really well, but he can also be a focal point. We saw the more supportive side here in Game 1 on the Seraphine. And we saw the more focal-oriented point in Game 2 here on the Silas. And I think that's a really good thing to show. Um, of course, he's from Os, and so he wouldn't take up an import slot on an NA team. Obviously, being stuck here on Team Liquid, where obviously there's just no chance that any of them get any sort of playing time on the main roster because their main roster is too good, is, uh, is certainly a negative. But at the end of the day, it's still really positive in order to see... in seeing this, this massive amount of talent and growth and success... From these young players, hopefully that can get a shot somewhere else. But as for CLG, um, they they lose 0-2 here, but I still don't think it's, this is that bad of a series for them. I think Triple played really, really well in Game 1 here on the Azir. Uh, really had an opportunity to save that game for them. A big reason why it took TL so long to close it out was because the Azir was pumping out so much damage in those team fights. So, good game from Triple in Game 1. And then Game 2 was a little bit more stompy. Um, they didn't have as much to talk about. Rosethorn is going to be my dud of the series again here. Just another series where it's like, man, I just really hope you can do more. Like, I was, I'm was, i hoping that you just... I, die, you die so much. Like, to, uh, it, it's just hard to... It's hard to really say, like, Rosethorn is consistent. Because he had such a good spring. And he's reverted back to his pre-spring. He was someone who I was hyping up on this channel so, so, so much last... Just, like, three months ago. And uh, it just feels like he is back to 2021 Rosethorn, which is unfortunate to see. But uh, a rough week for him. Uh, not a good Gragas game. Not a good Belveth game. Belveth is a really strong champion right now as well. So to see him not perform on that champion, even into a matchup like Wukong, which I can see Belveth having trouble with, is, is just not a particularly great sign. But as for the outlooks of these teams, like I said, Team Liquid's just kind of sitting alone at the top of the pile right now. Uh, they look pretty unstoppable. Bradley looks good enough in the top lane. I definitely think he still has his struggles. He He's a little bit too over-aggressive, I think, for that role, but... And then Armeo, definitely, you know, he's fine. 
Uh, I don't I don't think highly or lowly of our male. Like I'm glad he's on the team, veteran presence, yeah yeah yeah. But I don't think he's necessarily like the best. I think really you're looking at Hayari Yian and Ayla as being genuine superstar level talents here in Academy, LCS level talents I should say, and uh, they definitely showed why in this series. As for CLG, you, you have some good players and there's some some room for improvement. I think someone like Meech actually shows room to become like one of the better bot laners in Academy, but it certainly has to, it has to become that because it's not that right now. And players like Rosethorn, oh God, I just hope he gets back to where he was, you know, just a couple months ago because uh, it really just seems like he's lost a lot of confidence, but hopefully he can turn it around. Hopefully CLG can turn it around and uh, kind of get back to that surprising form that they were at in spring before going into Proving Grounds. That is going to go ahead and bring us to our final series of the week, and it was Golden Guardians Academy taking on Evil Geniuses Academy to, uh, how do I say this nicely, bottom, bottom teams. Um, they split one and one, and really good for GG. They really needed a win here, and they get it in game one off of the back of a pretty good uh, Belveth game here by Acadian. He has actually shown some decent proficiency with that champion in the first week here. Um, it might be a pick that this team tends to go to a little more often. As for Evil Geniuses, uh, they do go ahead and take that second game here. And uh, stop me if you've heard this one before, but it's off the back of their bot lane. Um, and uh, for EG, that should be no surprise. Kaori and Smoothie, a, a really good second game here on the Zeri and the Lulu. Um, Kaori's going to be my player of the series here. His game two here on the Zeri was really strong. And even his game one on that Zeri was, was still pretty good. He was really effective. Uh, just wasn't able to kind of pull the game back after uh, Acadian kind of spiraled it a little bit out of control. Uh, but uh, yeah, DG looks meh. And uh, Tomio's my dud of the series. I'll get to that now. Uh, he just is super inconsistent. He gets completely out jungled by Acadian in that game one. I actually think the Wukong into Belveth matchup is pretty Wukong favored, uh, at least for the most part. Uh, and, and he gets obliterated in that matchup. It really wasn't even that close. And Acadian's someone who. Yes, he has definitely had some highs in Academy so far this year, but he's definitely also had some lows, and I wouldn't consider him like a surefire, you know, top-tier Academy jungler by any means, but Atomio just got outplayed, and then he goes, he picks the Vi in Game 2. He is pretty proactive, he's just not a, he's still not a huge reason why they win the game, though, I would say. He's not, he's not like the driving force in the same way that Acadian was in Game 1, but, uh, so he's giving me my dud of the series. Everybody had at least one good game, though, so... You know, I feel bad for picking on Tomio because he still had a pretty good game too on the Vi. But um, as for Golden Guardians, this team just looks lost. Like, it, it, you're glad to pick up a win here and you're really glad to see Acadian playing well because he's supposed to be the one that is kind of anchoring this team. Um, you're still waiting on a mid laner. You're still waiting on leader. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I have a lot. I haven't brought him up so far because I really don't know if he's even going to play this split. I'm going over, under the assumption that he's just not going to play this split because visas are, you know, as someone who lives in the U.S., like, visas are really difficult to get right now. And um, I just, I don't think he's going to be playing this split, but people are certainly holding out hope for that. Um, I think the rest of this team, the bot lane has just been meh. Uh, Array and Chime, you, you, you were hoping for more from Array. You know, obviously, he's played really well in Proving Grounds and in the amateur circuit the past few years, and... Just comes up to a team that is in a little bit of disarray, uh, pun intended, and uh, isn't able to kind of carry. Uh, and then Concept is fine. Again, weird champion pool. He picks some more standard picks in this one, but still genuinely, you know, just, just a fine player. Not someone who I would consider a huge plus or a huge minus. Just someone who is okay at best. Um, no one on this team, I think, is like a carry. And I think that's really starting to wear down Golden Guardians, but... Um, that, that's just what, at this point, that's what they are. They're going to be a bottom tier academy team. Uh, if they get leader, maybe something turns around, maybe they can start playing around him, but until then, not much to talk about. For Evil Geniuses, like I said, some really good players and really good performances, but inconsistency. That is the best way to put it. Kaori and Smoothie, I think, have been really good, but, uh, the top side of this map, Surti and Tomio, the two prospects that you're hoping really turn into something, have, uh, you know, definitely been question marks and haven't, uh, come along as quickly as I think a lot of Evil Geniuses fans wanted them to. So hopefully they can continue their development track and can kind of get on that page to be uh, LCS caliber uh, prospects. Just we're going to have to wait and see if that can continue to happen. 
And that is going to do it for my week four NA Academy analysis and overview of all 10 series, all 20 games played for all 10 teams. I hope you guys enjoyed. Up on the screen right now, you are going to see a new updated version of my standings page. Um, this is a little bit of a prototype, so if it changes in the next couple of videos, don't be too alarmed. But uh, up on the screen right now, you're going to see the current standings for uh, the league. Uh, with a power ranking that I, I have a I have tiers for Academy. I for the other regions I will be doing actual power rankings, you know, one to ten or one to seventeen for the LPL, but for Academy, I find that to be a little less important. Uh I, I don't really find team success to be as important as how the players are playing when I go over it. So I do want to give a little bit of a general overview with how good these teams have been and kind of placing them into a little bit of tiers, but I feel like ranking them specifically one to ten feels a little bit pointless. You'll also see the win-loss streak, um, how many games they are above 500 or below 500, etc., etc. But um, I also do want to go over my player of the week and my dud of the week. My player of the week should be no surprise. Uh, my player of the week for week four is going to be Spawn, who was really phenomenal for Dignitas this week. He's been phenomenal all year. You could absolutely make a real case that he has been the best player in Academy in 2022, at least in summer. He has been really, really solid, and he carried them to a nice 4-0 week. As for the dud of the week, it's got to go to Hyper on TSM. Uh, you could give this to Shenyi as well on TSM, but for me, Hyper is just hyper inconsistent, like I said earlier in the video, and um, really needs to figure out whether or not he can play outside of Lee Sin, uh, because that's really what it feels like right now, is it's Lee Sin or Bust for Hyper, and he didn't get Lee Sin this week, so he did not have a very good week at all but hope you guys enjoyed if you did go ahead and leave a like it tells me that you like this content obviously academy content is um a little more of a niche audience but if you made it all the way to the end here i would really really appreciate it if you gave it a like and uh, let me know down in the comment section how you feel about the new graphics the new standings page just everything how you feel about academy week four who you who your set of the week your your debt of the week was etc etc so uh, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day, and I will see you all later.